Let's talk about rounding rules. It's really important to round your numbers to the correct number of significant figures, and we have two rules for doing that. Now, if you have an addition or a subtraction step, you want to round it to the least or the fewest number of decimal places. I'll show you some examples. And if you're doing multiplication or the division, which is what we do most of the time in chemistry, you want to round the final result to the least number of significant figures. So, you know, always do the math, and then at the end, round to the proper significant figures. Write your units, and I like to box the answer so I know I'm done with the problem. Okay? So let's consider a subtraction. So what volume is dispensed is commonly calculated in chemistry using this glassware called a burette. So let's say the original reading is 32.05 and the final reading is 48.07 milliliters and we know by difference that's going to be the volume dispensed. So if we do the subtraction here, this is what we get on our calculator, 16.02 milliliters. Now the first volume reading is accurate to two decimal places, the second reading is accurate to two decimal places, and our calculator is giving us an answer to two decimal places. So here, we don't need to do anything. Everything is out to two decimal places and we're good to go. Let's look at an example where it might not be the case. So again, what volume is dispensed? Let's say the original volume reading is 32.10, and the final volume reading is 45.20. Now, if we do the math on our calculator, it's going to show 13.1. 13.1 has only one decimal place, but this glassware is accurate to two decimal places. So what we need to do is, well, add a zero, okay? If it's after the decimal place, you can add a zero without changing the quantity, but you do change the precision or how you know many decimal places there are, okay? And therefore, the number of sig figs. Let's look at one more example. Let's say we have this balance here and we wanna add up the mass of all of these three objects which are weighed separately on maybe even different balances, okay? So we wanna know, what is the total mass? So the first object weighs 100.2, the second object 3.1, and the third object 2.49. That might be the penny there. Okay, now if you add all these up on your calculator, you get 105.79. Is that the answer? Do you write that? What do you do? Well, object one is accurate to one decimal place, object two is accurate to one decimal place, and object three is accurate to two decimal places. Okay, so here we want to use that um, kind of mnemonic to help us remember this. The loser is going to win. So the losers here have accuracy only to the tenths place or one decimal place. So we want to write our answer to the tenths place. So 105.8, make sure you put the units of grams there, okay? So for addition or subtraction, you round to the fewer number of decimal places. I don't care what your numbers are, 10,358.2, you're gonna round it off to the tenths place. Now, what do you do with multiplication or division? You round to the least number of total significant figures. So let me show you how this works. So let's say we have this sheet of paper and we've got this really old ruler and it could, it's pretty much accurate out to the nearest inch, okay? And we wanna know, hey, what is the area of this sheet of paper that measures eight inches by 11 inches? So the area is length times width, eight inches times 11 inches. If you do this on your calculator, eight times 11 is 88. So is that the answer? What do we do? Well, eight is one significant figure. 11 is two significant figures. The loser here is the eight, it has only one sig fig. So we wanna round 88 to one sig fig. How do we do that? We don't wanna put the number nine here because 88 is huge and nine is small. If somebody uh, owed you $88 for your couple days at work or something like that, or your day at work at your job, and they, were, they said, hey, let's just round it to $9 but I work the whole day, shouldn't I get more than $9? You should get around $90, for example, right? So this is incorrect rounding. What you wanna to do to correctly round this to one significant figure is use scientific notation. Don't just delete numbers off of your final result. You're gonna get the wrong thing. Area is inches squared. Notice how the units here are inches squared. Let's look at another example. 
let's say this should be division on the slide here. Let's say we want to calculate density. We have the mass, we have the volume of the substance, and we want to calculate mass divided by volume, okay? The 18.20, four sig figs. The 1.12, three sig figs. If we punch this onto our calculator, it gives you a result of 16.25, but we want to round it to three sig figs, which is the lower number. So here, we want to write 16.3, and notice how the units are grams per cubic centimeter. We'll talk more about density uh, a, a little bit more in this class and on lab two. All right, what about this question here? How many grams is 1.5 pounds of potatoes? So of course you set up your conversion as we've been talking about with the pounds canceling there. Remember, one pound is infinite number of significant figures. We don't say the one has one sig fig. It's infinite, so we ignore that. The 454.6, we pretty much view that as a definition, okay? It does have four sig figs there. But what you do is you count the starting number of significant figures in the 1.5 pounds, which is the starting quantity. It has two sig figs. So even though you punch this into your calculator and you get 681.9, how do we round this to two sig figs? We don't want to round this to um, 68 because 68 is a vastly different number than 681.9. So again, you want to round this off to, you guessed it, significant figures, 6.8 times 10 to the 3. So if you're stuck, write it in scientific notation. I'm assuming you remember your rounding rules from elementary school. If it's 5 or higher, you round it up. If it's 4 or lower, you round it down and make sure you keep the number of decimal places you need, make sure you keep the number of significant figures you need. You might need to add a zero to your result if it's after the decimal place, or shrink things down with scientific notation if you've got way too many digits there, okay? Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, 